Welcome to the Archive for Sexology. Among many other things, we also offer a free online curriculum in sexual health. I am its author, Erwin Haverly. The curriculum consists of six courses, six semesters, and can be studied not only at home, but also in the classroom. Right now, I would like to introduce you to a section in our fourth course, Sexually Transmitted Diseases, and share with you a lesson in epidemiology. Let's start with two historical facts. In 1492, Columbus discovered America. Three years later, a great epidemic of syphilis broke out in Europe. For the old continent, this was a new disease. And thus people began to wonder where it had come from. Pretty soon it became clear that it was sexually transmitted and that it had first been noticed in Naples when that city was conquered by a French army in 1495. As was typical for the time, this army consisted mostly of mercenaries from many different European countries, including Spain. When the army withdrew, the mercenaries returned to their countries of origin. Those who had been infected in Italy now infected the folks at home. Thus, within a short time, syphilis spread all over Europe, a frightening development for everyone especially since in these early days the symptoms were very severe and soon led to death. The worst part of it, the disease was incurable and remained so for over 500 years. Even many famous people died of it. For example, the great composers Franz Schubert, Gaetano Donizetti and Robert Schumann and the French writer Guy de Maupassant. It was only about 100 years ago that the cause and the cure of syphilis were found. But that is another story. Instead, let us return to the time around 1500 AD. For the people at that time, the return of Columbus from America and the following outbreak of syphilis in Europe starting in a Mediterranean port city, could not have been a coincidence. They became convinced that Columbus's crew had picked up the disease from the newly discovered natives and that it was a curse brought home from the New World. By the way, the word syphilis was not invented until a few decades later. At first, people simply called it the French disease after the French army that had first spread it around. The French, of course, called it the Italian disease after the first outbreak in Naples. The Dutch called it the Spanish disease. The Russians called it the Polish disease. The Turks called it Christian. And the Japanese called it the Portuguese disease because the Portuguese were the first Europeans who came to Japan. Curiously enough, nobody called it the American disease. Nevertheless, in the following centuries, everybody assumed the American origin of syphilis. And this can be seen in a very instructive passage from a famous novel by Voltaire. The French writer Voltaire was a major figure in what we now call the Age of Enlightenment. He fought tirelessly against superstition and intolerance and was especially impatient with the religious authorities of his time. He died in 1778, two years after the American Declaration of Independence of 1776. Anyway, in his satirical novel Candide, he gives us a very interesting lesson in epidemiology. The book tells the story of a naive young German nobleman who believes with his philosophy teacher Pangloss that we live in the best of all possible worlds. As it turns out, however, he suffers one misfortune after another 
and after having been separated from Pangloss, he eventually meets him again by accident in a truly pitiful state. Pangloss tells him, Oh, my dear Candide, you remember Paquette, that pretty maid who waited on our noble Baroness. In her arms I tasted the pleasures of paradise, and they produced these torments of hell which are now destroying me. She was infected with a disease and perhaps has since died of it. She had received this present from a learned Franciscan who had derived it from its source. He was indebted for it to an old countess who had it from a captain of the cavalry, who had it from a marquise, who had it from a page. The page had it from a Jesuit who, during his novitiate, had received it in direct line from one of the fellow adventurers of Christopher Columbus. For my part, I shall give it to no one, because I am dying. There is no question that Voltaire's readers had no problem with his main argument, although it was expressed in satirical terms. His contemporaries knew very well that syphilis, like any other sexually transmitted disease, spreads through both heterosexual and homosexual intercourse. They also knew that some people have sex with both men and women. And, of course, they all knew that sexually transmitted diseases do not recognize barriers of class, age, religion, nationality, or sexual orientation. Voltaire, in his little epidemiological lesson, reminds his readers of these simple, almost self-evident truths. The philosopher Pangloss has sex with the chambermaid, the maid, before that, with the Franciscan monk, the monk with the marquise, the marquise with the page, the page with the Jesuit priest, and the priest with a sailor from a ship under the command of Columbus. In the process, the disease crossed several national borders. You will have noticed Voltaire once again uses this occasion to needle the Catholic Church, one of his favorite targets. Thus he begins the chain of infection with three men and their homosexual intercourse, the sailor, the Jesuit, and the page. The bisexual page then carries the disease into the heterosexual population where it continues to spread. As I said, in Voltaire's time, everyone was well aware of these things. Therefore, it was very sad to see that in the 20th century, some ignorant politicians spoke of AIDS as a gay disease. They actually believed that it would kill only homosexuals and that everybody else had nothing to worry about. Obviously, they did not know much about epidemiology or even about literature and the great writers of the past. Today, we know better. In fact, the heterosexual AIDS infections now outnumber the homosexuals ones by far. Worldwide, AIDS is now mostly a heterosexual disease. There is really no surprise here. There has never been, and there will never be, a sexually transmitted disease that restricts itself to a special group of people, gay, straight, or otherwise. When it comes to sex, people have not changed all that much since the time of Columbus. Therefore, when AIDS came along, a little study of Voltaire's Candide would have been enough to educate even modern innocent readers about the world's sexual realities. And by the way, it's a very funny book.